Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to look at PYQs of uh, CMAT exam from percentage topic. Uh, so I'm going to discuss all the questions from uh, paper 2018 to 2022. In fact, I've also released a detailed video on percentage topic. Uh, so if you want, you can also check the description of this video where I have provided the link of that particular video. And uh, in that I have explained concept and some practice questions along with this PYQ. If you are just willing to check uh, the PYQs, then this video is fairly sufficient. This is a short video. So let's go ahead and let's understand. In fact, we are going to look at almost all the PYQs from this uh, previous year papers. So as I have shown on the screen, let's begin with that. And before that, I just want to quickly tell you that this massive offer is going on on Anakinmi Plus and Iconic subscription. So you can go for that using my code chart. And the new batches are starting every week. In fact, one batch is starting from today. And these are the benefits of Plus and Iconic from subscription. CMAT exam. So I have, since so many percentage based questions have been asked in CMAT exam. So rather than taking some other question, I thought to include all the different varieties of percentage based question that have uh, come up in CMAT exam so that you can get a fair idea what to expect in uh, upcoming CMAT exam. And similarly for CET exam also, the level of difficulty will remain same. So the same uh, level of uh, preparation would also be helpful even for CET if you are targeting JBIMS or Sydney kind of college. So look at this question guys. Now it should not take more than 30 seconds for you to solve this question. So Tom's salary is 150% of John's salary. John's salary is 80% of Steve's salary. So what is the ratio of Steve's salary to Tom's salary, right? Um, so what I can do is I can always start with the last person that is Steve's salary. So Steve's salary, let's assume 100. So John's salary is 80% of Steve's salary. So John's salary will become 80. And Tom's salary is 150% of John's salary. So guys, Tom's salary will be 150%. That is 50% more than 80. So it is going to be 120. Are you getting this point? So we are asked to find out ratio of uh, Steve's salary to Tom's salary. So it's 100 is to 120. Or you can say it's 5 is to 6. Isn't that very simple question? Option D is the answer, right? So let's take a few more questions, guys. Look at this question. A mixture of petrol and kerosene weighing 5 kg contains 5% kerosene. Okay, let me just represent it this way. Uh, so this is the container. Okay. And it has 5% kerosene. So all remaining thing is petrol, right? So we have 95% petrol and remaining kerosene. Okay. So let me just indicate it this way. Of course, this two will be mixed. Okay. So let me indicate this is petrol, which is 95%, 95% and kerosene, let's indicate by blue color. So this part is kerosene, okay. So this is kerosene, which is 5%, okay. Now we have total 5 kg weight. So I'm just converting into grams. So it is total 5,000 grams. So what will be 5%? Can we say 5% of 5,000 is? 250 grams so 250 grams is kerosene and remaining 4750 grams is petrol now what they are asking is how much more kerosene must be added to make it 10 percent now guys we are adding some kerosene over here okay so instead of five percent it is becoming 10 percent so definitely petrol portion will become 90 percent but weight wise can i say it will remain 4750 so now i can say 90 percent is equal to 4750 so what will be 100 percent and at the beginning itself i had shown this calculation if you remember so guys this will be 4750 divided by 0 0.9 so this will come out to be 5277.7 so yeah approximately 5278 so what they are saying is how much uh, kerosene should be added so can i say earlier weight was 5000 grams and now it has become 5277 grams so we have added 277 grams approximately. So here the option is 275 grams because we had to find out approximate value. So if you look at this question, it was just about that small calculation, nothing much. You should be able to understand it correctly. Don't make any complicated equation for such question. Just use this approach. I call it box approach. So just watch that video through the link that I have provided in the description in that I have explained that box approach in detail. But what we are focusing is this petrol quantity, which is 4750 grams. Earlier it was 95% of total weight. Now it has become 90% of total weight. So we can find out the new total weight and we can see the increase in the weight. That's the portion of kerosene that we are adding. I really hope you have understood this. Chalo, let's go to the next part. 
two successive discounts of 8% and 12% are equal to a single discount of how many percent? Okay. Right. So two successive discount of 8% and 12% are equal to single discount of how many percent? So guys, let's do one thing. Let's take number as 100. If I reduce by 8%, it will become 92. And further, I need to reduce by 12%. Now, what is 12% of 92? So guys, 10% of 92 will be equal to 9.2. 1% of 92 is 0.92. So 2% will be 1.84. So just write down 1.8. So this is going to be approximately 11. So uh, my value was 100. So uh, sorry, this 92 will increase by, uh, decrease by further 11. So it will become 81. We had to reduce 92 by 12%. So it will become 81. So 100 has become 81. So can I say it has reduced by approximately 19%. So here is the option 19.04%. We can straight away tick mark. And this is CMAT 2020 question. In fact, I'll also show you CMAT 22 question and they are also similar guys. So nothing to worry. I mean, the questions are really simple. There will be some question about 20% question. So I can say out of 20 questions of pawn, there will be about three to four questions which will surprise you. One more thing that I want to mention over here is, guys, I have seen students, uh, you know, spending lots of time on just arithmetic topic, but make sure that you are spending just sufficient time and this videos and the subsequent practice sessions will be fairly sufficient for you to get complete preparation of this topic. So don't end up spending some, uh, you know, 10, 12 hours only on one topic of uh, arithmetic. Instead, what you can do is in this particular video, your three topics are covered. In next video, again, three topics are covered. So all this 40, 50 minutes video will be sufficient. And you can spend the time on completing other topic. For example, you will find questions based on trigonometry in uh, this exam or coordinate geometry. So just make sure you are doing basics of this area also so that you don't need to leave any of the questions. Okay, that should be the strategy. Let's look at this question in a local election between two candidates. One candidate got 55% of total valid votes and was declared as winner. 15% of the votes were invalid. Um, if the total number of votes polled were 15,200, guys, total votes were 15,200, out of which 15% votes were invalid. So can I say we need to consider only 85% of these votes? And out of this 85% votes, the winner got 55% votes, right? So can I say loser must have got 45% votes? So what we are asked is what were the votes, uh, valid votes of the loser? So can I say loser got 45% of these votes? So 45 by 100. This is what you had to do, right? Now this will become very simple question in terms of solution because here we are given exit values, okay? So I'll show you how to solve this question. So just cancel off the zeros. Now this is 20 FISA 100, okay? Or I can say, um, yeah, 25 FORZA 100 and um, 38 FORZA 152. Similarly, 5 FISA 25, 17 FISA, 9 FISA. So ultimately my answer will be 38 into 17 into 9. Once again, I really don't need to solve this question because I know my answer will not end with zero. So last digit will be either four or six. So let's see what should be the last digit. So eight sevens are 56. Last digit is six, six nines are 54. So my final last digit should be four. I can safely tick mark option C and go ahead. It should not take more than 60 seconds for you to solve this question. Even if they have thrown some calculations over here. Just make sure you are interpreting it correctly. Read the question once again in case if you had confusion. Okay, now let's look at this question. Very easy question. It requires a bit of Venn diagram approach. In a certain town, 40% of people have brown hair, 30% of the people have brown eyes and 12% have both. So let me represent it this way. Brown hair, so B, H. Brown eyes, we are representing with some other colors. We don't have brown color, but yes, these are brown eyes. So yeah, we are saying 45%, 40% people have brown hair. So let's assume there are total 100 people in the town. So 40 have brown hair, 30 have brown eye and 12 have both. So guys, how many people will have only brown hair? So 40 minus 12, it's 28. How many people will have only brown eyes? 30 minus 12, so it's 18. So how many people have at least one of brown hair and brown eyes? So it's 28 plus 12 plus 18. So it's going to be 58. 
that means remaining 42 do not have any of this so our answer is 42 percent out of 142 it's 42 percent so you can tick mark option b so i really hope you have understood this okay yeah chalo let's look at this question and this question is once again like insult to our intelligence what is this question the length breadth and height of a rectangular cuboid box so we know rectangular cuboid box is something like this yeah this is how it looks it has length l breadth b and height h so what is the volume of the box it will be l into b into h right now uh, the height, length breadth height are in the ratio 1 is to 2 is to 3 it doesn't matter we don't need to use this value because we just need to find out the percentage increase okay if length breadth and height are increased by 100 percent each matlab now my new length will become 2l let me just write it over here 2l 2b and 2h see when we increase a value by 100 percent it becomes double so my new volume will be 2l into 2b into 2h earlier volume was lbh now it has become 8 lbh so they are not asking how many times it has become they are asking what is the increase so can i say it has increased by 7 times lbh so we'll tick mark 7 times lbh luckily there is no option as 8 times otherwise many students end up marking 8 times so just don't commit that mistake otherwise this question was a cakewalk okay right do let me know in the comment section how did you find it do you also feel it was a cakewalk right let's look at this question a student gets 20 percent marks 20 percent marks and fails by 20 marks but there are some passing marks and this 20 marks are uh, you know 20 marks less than the passing marks okay it's 20 marks less than the passing marks another student who gets 36 percent marks gets 44 more than the passing marks so it's p plus 44 so guys marks wise what is this difference you know this is p value so 20 less and 44 more so can i say it's minus 22 plus 44 the complete gap is 64 so yes this is 64 marks and in terms of percentage this difference is 16 percent so you can straight away say 16 percent is 64 so 100 percent should be 400 because this is four times so this has to be four times so our answer should be 400 but what they are asking is find the maximum marks and the percentage necessary for passing now what will be the passing marks guys so can i say passing marks should be um yeah okay so we can find out 20 percent first of all so 20 percent will come out to be what 80 and we uh, our marks are 20 less than the passing marks so passing marks should be 100 100 out of 400 it's 25 percent so we can tick mark option c our passing marks are 100 which is 25 percent of the total marks right okay guys let's try for this question very easy question price of apple is twice that of orange price of orange thrice of banana so apple orange banana let's assume price of banana is 10 so orange is three times so it will be 30 always start from last okay so first we assume price of banana so we got orange as three times that is 30 and price of apple is twice of orange so apple should be 60 so total price will of one apple one apple one orange and one banana it's going to be 100 rupees right now what they are saying is there is a 10 percent increase in the price of apple so this will become 66 30 percent in the price of orange so this will become 39 because we are increasing this value by 30 percent okay and banana increased by 20 percent so this will become 12 so new price will be how much 9 plus 6 15 plus 12 27 right so this is going to be 127 okay <coughs> oh, sorry this is going to be 117 right just increase we are considering only increase 6 plus 9 plus 2 so it's uh, 7 more so 117 now our question is very tricky the question is find the percentage increase in price of 20 apple 20 orange and 20 banana guys if i compare one apple one orange and one banana or 20 apple 20 orange and 20 bananas you know the percentage change will always remain same are you getting this point for example you purchase one apple at five rupees and next time you purchase one apple at six rupees so what is the increase 20 percent 
but instead if you purchase 20 apple at 5 rupees so you paid 100 rupees and now you purchase 20 apples at 6 rupees so you will pay 120 rupees so for 20 apple also the increase will be 20 percent only so here we can directly say the increase is going to be 17 percent whether we calculate on 1 or we calculate on 20 it's same so this was the point that i wanted you to understand i really hope